About two years ago, while we were at the Cypress Trails RV Resort, I decided I was going to take care of an issue on my 2014 Newmar Star that had bothered me since day one. You'll notice that the slide on the kitchen here that they're working on did not have a slide topper. Newmar, for this particular model, Dutch Star, had decided that that canopy or the awning over it was good enough uh, protection. They were actually quite wrong on that decision. The problem with uh, using that awning as a double duty is that awning has a protection system built into it. And that system of monitoring whether or not it's raining or windy or not a lot could sometimes automatically retract that awning and therefore then negate or stop me having protection above my topper. For those of you that don't know, the reason you have toppers is that all of the pine cones and the needles and the sticks and God knows what else that's blowing around up there that ends up on your roof in between the times uh, between you moving, uh, it allows it to shed itself somewhat automatically if it's not too gross of a buildup. Now, on the setup that I had, because I had no topper on only that one uh, kitchen slide, wouldn't you know it that that is the slide that actually got the seals damaged because the previous owner must have brought in a branch or some big pine cones or debris and that rubber seal that's all the way around that big rectangular box had to be replaced. Now, I don't remember exactly what it cost, but it was probably uh, you know, in the several hundreds of dollars to have that done because of the labor uh, involved, probably three, four hours worth of work and then, uh, you know, the part itself. So while I was at the Tampa RV show in 2018, I ran into David Jones and he owns RV awnings under the Sun RV LLC. And uh, it was a kind of a great booth, uh, lots of people on there, super, super busy. I could tell he was the guy that uh, people were interested in talking to. So I queued up and sooner or later we ended up talking about some of the options that I would have to fix my problem. And I ended up buying the Ascent uh, model, A-S-C-E-N-T. It's the topper that you can see that actually has a case on the outside to protect it so that when you're driving down the road, the uh, wind from you driving 60 or 70 miles an hour isn't gonna unfurl this thing on you. Uh, also kind of protects it from the elements in the times when you're not deployed. The beauty of this outfit is they didn't shy away from a challenge. I can't tell you how many places I contacted when I told them I wanted to put a topper underneath in close proximity to my upper canopy awning and they just immediately said oh it can't be done that's not what David said he came out and looked at it he said well we'll have to squeeze it in there we'll have to watch it we're doing but we think we can do it that shade that you just saw put in on the kitchen side was 162 inches long and with the labor and the cost of the ascent model topper it was about twelve hundred dollars the one you're looking at now actually is 312 inches so it's quite a bit longer and the labor and with the bracketry it was about twenty one hundred dollars installed after we're all done here now you got to ask yourself uh, why am I replacing this well you're going to learn pretty quick as an RV newbie that as much as you would like these to be a four season machine, they're really not. The minute you start being in too many windy conditions and too many snowfalls and too many ice storms, you're going to start to see things that are just not going to make it. And that's what happened to us. One time we were in a uh, repair facility here and wouldn't you know it, uh, the day before we were 
scheduled to bring this in finally after waiting a number of days for parts it snowed overnight so here we are in the morning we've got like three four inches of snow on this topper and that's when you learn real quick that unless there's every single snowflake removed from that topper it will not wind up and it will not cooperate especially when it's one that's this long and we slightly crinkled it and it was kind of never the same after that particular damage now we probably would have left it but the other thing that we started to notice happening that was when this slide was out we'll call that deployed when it was deployed the topper sticks out about three feet and that three feet of fabric the whole 312 inch length could have wind catch it and it would slightly unspool in these wind storms and I'm talking about when I'm stationary and it would pay out or unroll a lot of the additional length and then it would snap back violently when the wind would die down. Since we had this new topper put on, Sue and I have been super careful to clear our toppers off and sometimes if it was gonna snow, we might even bring the slides in and we'll just live in a compacted mode so we don't have to deal with that. But this last time we were in Milwaukee, we stayed extra long into the season later than normal because we had gotten there later than normal. Right before we left, I was at Home Depot one day getting some things and I kept looking at the leaf blowers. Now I had perfectly good leaf blowers when I had a stick and brick house and like everybody, I gave them up. But I've always noticed that most RVers always had one and I would see them GIing their patio and their area up and I thought well what the heck do I want to do that for I don't I don't own the patio and typically I'm not staying that long so I never really bought one but something just kept telling me that I needed to get one so that I could more effectively clean these toppers off when they were all full of pine cones and needles and who knows maybe even snow I could tell you that in the past I thought I was pretty clever. I had kind of a pole and a 90 degree arm arrangement that I would screw on to the end of the pole and I would be able to reach up and go around the corner and I could kind of timidly brush off the top of these toppers. That absolutely is not the way to go. What you want to do is you want to carry an electric either a plug-in one like I got because I'm cheap or a lithium battery one that's battery powered so you can blow these things off and you want to get an ultra high powerful one so you can blow snow off when it's freshly fallen. Uh, if you do not blow the snow off before it freezes and sets up on your rig you're going to have a problem. The ideal setup for your blower, especially if you're at home and you can fashion this up before you hit the road, uh, make a set of pipes or something uh, out of PVC that you can assemble and shove the blower in on the end so that you can stay on the ground off of a ladder and you can just walk along the sides and blow the snow off uh, at a 90 degree angle. Uh, they sell things like this if you want to clear your gutters out with your blower when you're walking on the ground and just adapt the idea for the RV. So as you've been watching this, I want to uh, bring to your attention the fact that these are guys that do this for a living. There was three guys for most of the job. They worked about four hours and did both of these. They didn't take any breaks. You're looking at 12 man hours to put this in. Certainly this could be a do-it-yourself project for someone that's very handy, but at the very least you need two people to lift the things. And it's just, you know, why take the chance drilling holes and doing things like this for the first time possibly uh, in your rig and through the roof and it just didn't seem like something that certainly I wanted to challenge. I can't tell you that uh, 
there was uh, about an hour or so that I was inside and I was right on the other side of the window uh, on the guy with the blue um, on the ladder there and they were drilling one hole after another when they were putting in the uh, channel that supported and held the fabric itself and Sue was in there and they're drilling holes and they're on about the tenth hole and I'm telling Sue I said I, I'm says I'm, I'm going crazy listening to all these holes going in my roof well I probably shouldn't have said it then because I I had probably about another 60 holes that got put in there so uh, it was really nerve-wracking for me at that point one tip I would like to give you is that before you have a new topper like this put on you can see how many holes and how much caulk and how much fooling around to put this thing in takes and you really want to make sure that your seal on the four sides of your box or your slide is healthy and clean and you know if you're gonna put any type of a dressing on it that should all be done before this topper goes on it because once it goes on it, the entire um, seal across the top is going to be inaccessible for you. And if you have to clean it or put baby powder on it or anything like that, you have to reach it from each of the two sides. What's going to be interesting is in August of this year, so it would be 2020, if all goes according to the plan, Sue and I are going to be in Napanee at Numar and we're going to have this slide possibly removed from the coach. Uh, I've kind of had a lot of chronic issues with this slide and I'm going to make an attempt finally to getting it fixed right by having the slide wheels that are on the end of the four tubes that support this slide replaced. They're not really made to be a user repaired part. It was supposed to last forever. I guess the joke's on me. They did not last forever. And now I'm the one caught holding the bag, paying for the repair. But the point is, is that if this slide has to come out or be hyper extended out of that opening, I'm thinking that possibly this uh, topper that I'm having installed here is in fact going to have to be removed. What we're looking at right now here is the old topper fabric coming off that big giant long tube that goes from one end to the other had a support in it a center support and that was a poor design it was not enough support in the middle it actually needed two of them rather than one the new improved version that you're seeing put in now that this is the ascent casing or the body and it actually has a center support built into the casing to I guess help everything be a little bit more in line and a little bit more rigid and right now they're lining everything up and bolting that in place okay so this is the guy thing going on here where you study and you look back and you study what you're gonna do and you come up with the plan and then pretty soon you say you know what time to get their owner involved let's go wake them up we need them to open this thing up and finally I get to feel like I'm part of the project here and I want you to know that I pressed this button and I made the side come out like this Okay, so this is the part of the job here where I thought, okay, I'm glad I paid somebody to do this because I don't picture the Chan Man being able to do this. Um, here's David Jones up there going back and forth, waiting for his helper to deliver to him the uh, canvas that eventually is going to go up there. I don't imagine that is light, um, pretty heavy duty stuff but they're going to be feeding it in on two edges one edge and and channel way is in the tube and the other one is the channel that they installed on the roof of the rig the stationary 
uh, channel. And just the way it's billowing right now is the way uh, my old one would billow even when it was hooked up to the tube that had spring tension in it. So it was obvious that the spring tension had seen better days and that was one of the reasons why I replaced it as well as the puckering in the fabric uh, because of the damage that it sustained from the center roller. One of the things I liked about David's installation was he could tell right away because he's done enough of these that this particular topper was so long that from one end to the other if he installed it with only the three brackets it typically came up with that you could potentially be bending that top piece of fiberglass that sticks out that provides this lip for you to attach this housing to. So if you look real close on the picture here you'll see that I have one, two, three, four, five brackets which is probably two more than the uh, instructions call for. But he's done this enough times that he's seen that he can do it better uh, and you know learned from uh, past installations I'm sure. You just saw David uh, lay down on the topper up there and he's drilling some more holes and I'm sitting in there you know working on whatever I was working on you know getting all nervous about the holes but I can tell you that this installation now has been in over two years and I haven't had any leaks and nothing is blown off and everything is fine and uh, perfectly uh, happy with the uh, carefree product and the installation that was done here. So it looks like it's a little breezy here because this time lapse is speeded up 800%. But trust me, it really wasn't that windy. There was some movement, and thank God for that, because it really was a hot day. Uh, I was really thankful how hard these guys worked on such a hot day. I think it says a lot about the confidence of this crew when I told them back then, and. Honestly, we did not have a YouTube channel back then, but we said, oh, you know, we're going to put this on Facebook if it's all right with you, and said we'd like to record it and show it to our friends and anybody else that would like to see it. And they were perfectly fine with that because, you know, real professional installation, they knew that there wasn't going to be any monkey business going on. Uh, they had a pickup truck parked in back of my rig there that had all the parts that they needed. And uh, I, I don't think they actually even left to get anything. I think they pretty much had everything they needed um, the entire day they were there. I have to be honest with you. The thing that worried me the most about this installation was that you could open and close this slide 10 times and you'd have nine different dimensions on what the uh, stick out was on the front of the slide versus the back of the slide. And I remember many times it might vary by as much as an inch. So I was a little hesitant on how they were gonna make this whole thing work. And I got to tell you that it never looks like it's saggier on one side than the other. So I don't know what miracle they did when they installed this thing. But I hope when the whole shooting match goes to Numar and they have to disconnect the slide topper so that they can repair the slide, I hope they get it back in the same position. So you're going to see the owner of the company, uh, David Jones here in a second, standing on a ladder. It's kind of the moment of reckoning after all of this hard work. And he's looking pretty much for the same thing that I would have been looking at to see how's the left side doing versus the right side. And I probably had the most important job though because I was inside pressing the button. 
and uh, you know I was even smart enough to open the window here so that we could yell back and forth in case something got caught in its underwear but uh, here I am pressing the button everything's going in good and I left the soundtrack off because I'm embarrassed for you to hear what my slide would sound like but the cool thing would have been if I would have left the soundtrack in you would have heard uh, David Jones saying perfect perfect and the smile on his face would have been worth propping a separate camera up to capture that but at that time I wasn't as good a youtuber as I am now hope everyone enjoyed this video I had fun putting it together we'll see you next week